Hi there! This video gives an overview of the model design and then shows how the final assembly comes together. I'll use a few upcoming videos to deep dive into major sub-assemblies. In due course, I'll have a parts list and model file to publish at galacticplastics.com. Today I'm going to share my new LEGO model. Uh, this is called uh, Interference. And uh, I'll give Interference a bit of a spin so you can see the overview. Uh, interference is a Vic Viper. It has two forward prongs, a couple of windswept wings coming out of the, uh, near the prongs, um, uh, two rear uh, kind of tail fins, and then a single vertical stabilizer as the primary design pattern. I'll take it uh, up off the stand uh, just to see quickly from the side and below, and then we'll talk some more about the ship. So uh, this is in profile. And then uh, let's see a bit from below. And then back on the stand so we can talk a bit. All right, so uh, so I think interference looks pretty good uh, in profile, uh, the kind of uh, in two D. I uh, went for something that was um, a bit long in terms of the prongs, um, a little bit racy in terms of that it's a bit narrow. Um, the uh, we've got some uh, color blocking with the, the two different blues uh, that carry forward, uh, come into the converged in the core, fan out, uh, and then are carried back in this tail. So I think that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I've used white um, white around the edges and then for some striping blocking, uh, we'll talk more about in just a minute. Uh, there's some highlights in orange, uh, in orange and a bit of a gradient fade there, some bits of red detail, some dark blue and various other things just to pop. Uh, and then uh, then throughout there's these um, uh, metallic color. This is a this is a uh, some custom chromed parts. Uh, they are uh, chrome steel. So it's a little darker than the usual mirror finish that you would see just on straight silver chrome uh, throughout. So um, I might pull out, uh, just point out a couple of things about this model and design before we uh, show you how it comes together from the inside. Uh, and maybe firstly start with the cockpit. So this is a pretty interesting cockpit design, uh, I felt. And uh, what's going on here, uh, if I pull back, uh, uh, this is the uh, windscreen. Uh, that I've used for this. This is a six wide windscreen. Uh, it comes with this, it's got some nice faceting here at the back, uh, but the front uh, is just a 90 degree corner, the edge. And uh, I wanted something that wasn't quite like that. So what I've done is uh, taken two of these uh, side by side, of course, opposed to one another, uh, but I've then uh, rotated it downward uh, and then cut across uh, with this other part here. Uh, and so there's some fun angling happening to be able to get that to come down. Uh, and this part here then becomes a kind of a valence, which is up around the outside of that uh, windscreen. It's giving you a nice line and then cutting out those facets. So one, two, three, I think in a pretty nice way. It turns out that the underneath of that windscreen, this is a 33 degree angle. And so it's just perfect for these inverted 33 degree slopes uh, that are coming in along the top. And then the entire section uh, is out uh, seven plates. Uh, so I've uh, used some clear paneling um, here to be able to see in, and there's a white striping that I've carried down uh, and then back around, uh, which I thought looks uh, pretty sharp. Uh, here in the front, uh, these uh, uh, prongs. So maybe just at the front of the prong. So I've done something with texture here with these plates with the bar elements um, uh, up in clips. And so they're, uh, I thought it was a pretty nice look. Uh, with this texture when they're stacked against one another. I've dropped in these half pins. It gives it a bit of something which, I don't know, energy or electricity or something, you can imagine through there. Uh, and then that entire, that unit, those, uh, the clips which are holding it is all sitting underneath a uh, sex, these white panels. And, and so I don't know if you can see well, but it's red uh, and it's in, I think it's a nice detail and pop and looks better than it just being flush with the top. Uh, the opposite side of this uh, are these uh, is a series of these baby bows that are wedged up, um, and so they're cut through. It looks, uh, I think, pretty sharp here. Uh, it's uh, angled up underneath to, to match it. 
Uh, the blue uh, comes through. I did a, a switch between the dark azure and the blue here, uh, but kept the uh, kept the the um, kind of hard contrast as it comes in. And then this element, it's the first time I've seen this. This is a crane uh, a crane element uh, that I've got in Chrome. That I'm using it both for structural support in the front. The prong is strong, um, but also I like this jog. Uh, this angle I think is pretty nice, and so the it gives it a bit of. of of kind of sharpness uh, to the prong shape that I thought was great. Uh, the center of the prong section, bring this up. Uh, underneath these panels, I'm using this to get a reveal uh, for a bit of this uh, of this orange that looks angular. Uh, and then you can see this whole prong section itself and cutting through again with the steel and then another one of those crane elements for the jog uh, back up uh, into the main body. So it's coming out uh, and then forward. Underneath this, the uh, these wing swept wings, I wanted something which is a bit of, you know, felt like a very subtle uh, kind of shape uh, for the triangular here. So there's, um, so I'm using panels and it, it um, how to say, uh, kind of expands in a, a gradual way, heading back out, a bit of color blocking and, uh, opportunity there. Um, and there's a kind of a, there's pretty nice geometry and fit, uh, then back up into these, uh, into these slopes. Uh, and then this entire front prong, uh, inclusive of the the inner suite, is uh, banked uh, relative to the main body, so uh, it's uh, canted here. Uh, so I think it's it gives a good overall profile and shape. Feelings. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff happening here uh, up on top. Um, uh, maybe I'll start with this element. So I put a lot of work into this shape. So so the coming back down uh, from the top of the of, of interference of the ship uh, to the edge. Um, this piece uh, is uh, this element sitting 45 degrees relative to the fuselage. To do that, uh, I started with these 45 degree slopes with cutout, but you can't just stack those on top of one another because they don't really start until a half plate up. So I gave it them all a half plate offset relative to one another. There's some fun geometry underneath to get that gapping, um, and then the gapping itself I like. I think it looks I think it looks good. And when it's done, then it's a perfect 45 degrees across the top. Uh, I took advantage of that uh, with the texture and space then to drop in some color with the, the gradient there, and then this entire section then converges uh, as well um, uh, with some uh, some panels and some other geometry underneath to make that happen. Uh, and then it's sitting down relative to the overall body, uh, which gave then some space to do some fun things here on the inside, kind of mechanical, kind of intakey, uh, black uh, with some uh, those uh, steel elements and some texture and so forth. Uh, the underneath that uh, there's uh, the core frame itself is very strong, and then uh, there's a kind of a perfect nice fit uh, for this underwing portion here, uh, which is latched in uh, to come in, and then this is carrying the then carrying the lines back. Uh, towards the front, which I thought came out pretty nice. Uh, here on top, the um, put some effort into getting this this bit of this uh, um, curved orange tile. Uh, turns out this is not easy. This is rotated 45 degrees relative to the top of the ship, and the um, uh, so did some work to get that to come in just just perfect. Uh, I think it's a pretty nice reveal as the lines come up and around. And um, and then there's a um, this wedge up on this wedge section up on top. It then itself is coming down uh, uh, with these uh, gapped out uh, baby bows. Uh, I kept the uh, half plate offset there for some texture. It's done a different way here, uh, and then angled down into this rear section. And so the the blue here, there's a bunch of things happening with stud reversals and angles of various types uh, that come in uh, and then come down and around uh, for the our tail. Uh, that tail, uh, that stabilizer here, uh, I brought uh, in again that technique uh, done a different way of the gapping uh, to give it the 40 foot, the perfect angle on the back here without it being stepped. I thought it came out pretty nice. Uh, there's two rear fins uh, here. Uh, these are these these big 25 degree slopes in white. Uh, I've capped those in the, the blue section here on the outside uh, to give it um, uh, just a little more of an edge. Uh, and then there's some stud reversal and things happening here so you can't see the bottom of the slope. And I took advantage of that for just a little more uh, texture and angling of interest. This entire section then with this wing, it's coming down and around, then wrapped up into that are our big engines. Uh, the engines have, you know, from the rear you can see like these six thrusters 
or nozzles coming off of them. Uh, the unit that they're set in is four studs wide. Uh, through here, and you can see I've brought in some bit of blocking. Uh, I really wanted this. I really wanted this portion here in steel, and so uh, that's uh, these are two by two corner uh, panels, and it gives. It might be difficult to see, uh, but it gives a nice look. There's right here in the edge, uh, where the other uh, wedge is coming down um, the uh, uh, top of the uh, uh, the engine sections. Uh, uh, I continue straight back and so you get this uh, get this reveal um, but it came with some complexity uh, because this is uh, because I've now got the panel coming down the other side instead of it being four studs and ten plates wide it's nine plates wide and so then there's some internal geometry there's some fun internal geometry happening inside these engines uh, to get these thrusters up right next to one another uh, when we did that then each of these turns out to be um, uh, just about precisely four and a half plates uh, thick, and so the the which is the nine plates of uh, engines like surrounded by these panels, it all came together really nice. Um, but there's some complexity inside with uh, jumpers and bars and various other things to make that all happen in a seamless way. So I think that is uh, pretty much what I wanted to. Uh, I might mention the stand quickly. I pop it off. So this is a pretty typical stand for me. Uh, so it's adjustable. Uh, you can change the rake, and um, uh, just brought in some dark tan, um, uh, some subtle, some subtle texture. Uh, I get, uh, gave some connection back up the ship uh, with this these gapped uh, slopes here with the half plate, which seemed to be a thing uh, for this model. So that is this uh, is interference. Um, Throw it back up on the stand. And then uh, let me show you how uh, interference comes together. All right, so to start the final assembly, uh, we're going to bring in the uh, core frame, uh, which I uh, put together earlier. Uh, this frame, uh, I'm going to put it on top of a work stand uh, for assembly. So this is not our display stand, uh, but it has the same set of connections uh, up at the top. And we'll come in uh, on the bottom here uh, of the uh, core frame. So just like that. Uh, so then into this, uh, we'll put our cockpit section. Uh, here's the module uh, that I built out earlier. For that, yes, and uh, and to ins install this into the frame, I'm going to open up the glass on either side, uh, and that is to uh, let me get at uh, this bracket on a hinge down below, uh, which is going to hold the front down. Uh, there's a spacer here on this uh, on these headlight bricks. Uh, everything else here will connect up through the back. Yeah, this can be a little bit finicky. Just nice. Okay, and with this uh, there, now we can close up the glass. Okay, uh, now I'm going to put around the I'm going to put in the surrounds, uh, which go on either side of the cockpit uh, area. Uh, let me just nudge this down. Okay, uh, we created that earlier as well. It looks like this assembly, uh, and from above. Uh, and this is going to come in uh, uh, just uh, around the front uh, and then connect up in the back. And it can be a little bit fiddly, so let's see how I can get this to go. Nice. Cinch everything in. All right, so uh, with that on, you can see this is a pretty perfect fit uh, along the edge uh, of the glass and it's giving 
a nice reveal here uh, for the portion of the windscreen and canopy that's up above. Uh, the nose uh, then needs to be finished off. So uh, earlier I showed this little unit and this will come in on two studs. Nice. So uh, now that I've done that, um, you might be able to see down below, uh, if I can hold it in camera properly, uh, that these uh, hinge bricks uh, with the uh, plate uh, with the handle on top uh, now are uh, coming in uh, just perfect uh, and flush uh, up against that section of the cockpit surround. That's a really nice fit here with the door rail and uh, the plate extension. Uh, and you can see that uh, then if I get the nose in, uh, now uh, the light comes in, uh, it carries up through the center of the cockpit uh, and down and around. So that leaves just one little bit uh, to do uh, this little simple bracket. And this is the last finishing piece uh, now to come in on the bottom of the nose. And uh, pull this around. There we go. So it looks like this down from below, not from the front. And, uh, uh, and there is uh, our completed cockpit section. We can move on with the rest of the final assembly. All right, so then building everything else out uh, on top of this core for the frame on top of the work stand, uh, we're gonna start by attaching our prongs. Prong sections uh, look like this. Okay, and uh, this section with all the jumpers uh, is going to connect in uh, to our frame each side. So once, and as we do that, then we can uh, adjust the uh, angle as everything's on those hinges. This is going to temporarily get a bit uh, front heavy. Okay. Make sure everything's in there tight. All right. Good, good, good. And again, just angle. Okay, so uh, now we have the front of the ship. Uh, let's work here on the back. And uh, so then to this, uh, we'll put in the uh, two units uh, that we made for the this base of the side wing section. So, so from underneath. And to start with, that's going to connect in here and uh, here. And then uh, there's going to be a nice brace uh, across the top. And uh, the mechanic for this, I uh, just have to nudge it around through those uh, crane fr frame elements. And then here from this side, and so just a bit of finesse just to get that around. And then awesome. Okay, so it's looking like this now, and uh, you can see from the uh, the side on the starboard side. So uh, the, f uh, the bit of the uh, crane, this uh, frame comes in underneath, and then this portion is intersecting in with the, the, uh, uh, the valence right up underneath the top, and there's a little clip area here uh, that are sort of opposed 
uh, to just fit uh, very nicely. Then for strength, uh, because we have a lot, there's a lot now hanging off of the sides here. This area here is going to get a brace, and so uh, this is 12 long, and we'll just come in on top. Like so. So then uh, we can uh, proceed to put in uh, the center fuselage section. Uh, pull this up, put this together earlier. So from below, this side. Okay, and this is going to connect in on the jumpers here and here and here. Okay, so then with that in place, with that now in place, um, we need to hide this little section in here. And to do that, we have these two little units, uh, kind of like inserts. Uh, there's a Technic slope here, um, and then uh, using these brackets to get the placement just right. And uh, that will connect in on this bar we had exposed partial bar here, uh, we'll come right in uh, on one of the open studs here and it's spaced just perfect once we do that. Okay, and so that's cut this panel, uh, that one by one panel's cutting up underneath, uh, just covering everything up in an elegant way. Uh, we can go ahead and put in our engines. Uh, so did this earlier, two of these, and uh, that's going to be connecting in here down from below on a series of studs back up in here. So uh, that's just going to take a little bit of finesse to get in and then seal up down here from below. Nice. Okay, so the engines are there. And uh, now we'll put in the tail fin. Uh, and that's this unit. And you can see a pretty simple way of being able to get the gap in uh, that series of the half plate gaps. And this will connect in. It's uh, supported from the two sides. And then there's a very important stud that that's sitting on. Okay. So getting closer. So what that's leaving now, oh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, for both of these units, push that back. And the same thing over on this side. Okay, so there's just uh, two parts left and that's gonna be the top uh, cover here, which is, which looks like this above and then from below, a little more complicated. Uh, and that's going to be connecting in on this stud. Okay. One side, and then the other side.
Okay. All right, so then lastly, I'm gonna pop this uh, up onto the display stand. Uh, so maybe I should show the stand first. Uh, looks like this. And so this is adjustable. Uh, we can take off these parts and then there's a, tech, there's a channel here in which this left arm can rotate and support things. And bottom of the stand. So let me take this off of the... Okay. Display stand in. Okay, so this is the completed interference model.